Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and it is part of our review of the MSI Z87 series of motherboards and this is a quick overview of the command center that is included as a software in um, your MSI mainboard. And I'm using an M Power Max Z87 mainboard from MSI. It is not their uh, flagship. Their flagship, I believe, is the X Power, but this is def definitely one of their high end mainboards that are designed for overclocking. And they also have the, I also have the G45 review, and you can click on the link below or go to www.hitechlegion.com to read both of these reviews that I have done. And uh, this part where I show you an overview of this feature, uh, the command center is available once again for every MSI main board and it's included in the disc or you can download it from MSI's website. It gives you essentially a, a, a quick overview of what your uh, system is capable of. You can monitor your system and also, more importantly, you can overclock your system from your desktop. I'm running Windows 8 and it's compatible also with Windows 7. And uh, you see here that there are tabs here for different options. I actually like this layout uh, a lot better. It's a lot more convenient for me compared to the UEFI. I love the improvements that MSI has made with their latest UEFI for the Z87 line. Although I prefer the MSI Command Center uh, for overclocking and I don't normally say that for software because a lot of software for overclocking for the desktop uh, tend to be clunky but uh, after testing out this latest Command Center I'm, I'm finally back to using a software to overclock from the desktop. Uh, the last one that made me swear off was, I think it was the AMD one because I couldn't, uh, I couldn't, the, the, the memory overclock wasn't being recognized uh, when I was in the, when, when that I entered the BIOS wasn't recognized in the desktop. But I've tried the MSI Command Center so far. I overclocked both my G45 mainboard and my uh, Mpower Max mainboard here uh, with the software. And you can see here in the CPU options, you have essentially a slider that you can adjust each one or you can select all for each of these uh, or you can actually you can't slide up but uh, you can uh, input the addition here uh, that that's actually an indicator here it's not a slider the slider is here at the bottom uh, essentially you can subtract or add you can see here if I if I click 4 point, uh, 43 for the ratio and hit apply it will move up this is essentially a graphical representation representation of that if you want to select individual cores, you can also do that. And also, if you want to access the voltage features, which are important when you're overclocking, you can go to the advanced option here at the bottom. So I'm just going to go give you a quick overview of the layout here. Uh, here at the top, you have the tabs, the CPU, DRAM, GPU, RAM disk, and OC Genie. You can click on those and it will pop up quickly. Or you can, um, you can click on to the side to scroll it. Of course, it looks better, but uh, it's not fast. Uh, at the bottom, the same thing with advanced setting and information. If you click that, you can see that it animates. It's a nested menu. I would have preferred if it popped up pretty fast. I mean, it looks cool, but uh, for overclocking, I want it to pop up pretty fast. But uh, this one, it shows you that here in the advanced option is where your voltage setting is. You have a fast shortcut, a DRAM, and the setting option here at the bottom, which shows you the record warning. And it, lastly, the information one, motherboard, CPU, memory, and hardware monitor. Now, this is the latest version of MSI Commander. From I installed it, this one directly from the DVD, but uh, for some reason, it's not detecting that I have a Bluetooth. Uh, I have all my drivers installed here, and I also have the Wi-Fi installed, but it's not detecting that I have um, Bluetooth here. So I, I wanted to show you guys uh, the the MSI Commander app uh, you can you can MSI Command Center app that you can uh, use with the iOS device or Android tablet. I wanted to show that, but unfortunately at this point I cannot because uh, this um, this Command Center is not recognize this version of Command Center is not recognizing the main board's uh, wireless functionality yet. But I will I will once uh, I, they get an update I'm gonna show you that. Uh, version. But for now, let's continue on with the overview here. Uh, some of the options here will be repetitive and it, you will encounter them once again here on the other options. For example, here in the DRAM voltage and the GPU voltage. Uh, you can also adjust it here and also adjust it here in the window. So you just click voltage here. It will pop up a child window, a separate child window. Uh, also, it's worth noting that the although it's graphical, it's not very heavy uh, in the resources. I mean, I, I know my system is high-end, but I can feel a sluggish 
oh, uh, UI compared to a non-sluggish UI just from uh, years of experience with uh, reviewing uh, main boards and uh, video cards this is definitely a very light program although this one the voltage you can see that I'm moving it there's a little bit of lag because it's reading and communicating with the main board in real time and uh, when you make adjustments here it is uh, it is real time and you can also of course you have to hit apply first because that's a safety feature and uh, if you are not familiar overclocking of course and I suggest familiarizing yourself with that and also there's an I button here for the info button if you want to know what that is let's see let's see tooltip of course uh, it's not a it's not a, it's a it's a tooltip it's not a pop-up window I think it shows you the the acceptable range there and uh, of course here is if you're overclocking you have the CPU voltage adjustments here uh, just a quick uh, note I'm not gonna give you a full uh, a full tutorial with overclocking with Haswell but just a primer uh, for overclocking. Uh, CPU core voltage with Haswell is a lot different compared to uh, older or rather previous generation Intel Core CPUs. Uh, for example if you set the core voltage 1.275 uh, you can set it for maximum I think 1.4 before actually damaging the silicon but uh, once you breach 1.275 1.26 that is essentially uh, a that is territory that uh, that very few CPU coolers are capable of. I actually have the H110 here, and at 1.275, and you run a stability test, it will essentially uh, reach uh, try. It will be very very close to the maximum uh, temperature threshold. It will be close to 95 degrees and 100 degrees. But uh, if you have a high-end CPU cooler, I suggest keeping. Uh, for air cooler rather and uh, and the self-contained liquids cooling systems you can, I suggest keeping it at 1.275 MSI actually recommends 1.3 uh, of course it depends on your chip too so uh, but from my experience my chip is uh, doesn't like anything above 1.26 or 1.275 uh, because it really heats up when you load a normal program like PC mark and the uh, and uh, benchmarking programs like Cinebench, it will not heat up to that degree. But when you load a stability test, uh, what Intel has suggested and uh, uh, some other uh, manufacturers have suggested is that uh, you should use AIDA stability test because it's more uh, it's more linear and uh, sort of straightforward. And it definitely uh, stresses the Hazel CPU for that. Uh, other than that, you have options here for the CPU core voltage, the ring voltage. Uh, of course, the ring voltage is uh, it's essentially the uh, the ring bus that's that goes up and down across all of those uh, the interconnect for the entire uh, platform. Here we have the core, the GTA system agent, and the memory. And uh, of course, if you if you want uh, more information here, you can again you can just Google and you can uh, find more information for that. I'll probably make a tutorial for this one later on, but uh, for now, let's go back to the uh, overview here of the command center. Uh, once you have a child window open, you can open another one here. It will remain open. You have the, see if I click the voltage window, you can open the, the fan window, which is essentially, it allows you to control it. You have the smart mode, where you can, uh, you can see that it's in graph form. And it's a similar. And if you go to the UFI, they also have the same sort of graphical, uh, graphical menu here for the smart mode, and I like that. Uh, they also have the system fan, system fan three, and you just just keep it in manual mode if you like. Uh, and uh, let me just close this voltage menu here. And the other option here, uh, let's go back up. Uh, here at the top, you have the OS. It gives you OS information, BIOS information, and your CPU information, and the motherboard model information. And also, always constantly at the top is your CPU temperature, which is critical to know when you're overclocking. And uh, you have, again, let me slide into the next one here, is uh, other than the CPU fan and CPU, you have the CPU voltage. Again, like I said, uh, you can either access all the voltage here in a sub menu, complete all that uh, voltage option, or you can go to each uh, setting here and do it one by one. When you change it here, you, you can type it directly here at the center, or you can just use your sliders to do that. Uh, obviously, it, it won't let you put in more than 2.1 volt. Uh, this, uh, but it, it, it actually turns red at earlier than that, 1.2. To seven, yeah, 1.3, 1.3 volt as MSI recommends for uh, for regular home users. Let's be careful because you can see that it, it jumps to 
to uh, when you when you slide it, it actually jumps all the way to the 2.1 there. So don't make sure to hit default here at the top every time you make a mistake or make some changes that you don't want to keep. And the next option is for the DRAM. You have the clock setting here and the ratio of frequency is actually for uh, you can't adjust that here. You have to do the adjustments here for the voltage. You can do that, but. Uh, you can also pop up the DRAM child window at the bottom where you adjust the individual timings, the advanced DRAM timings here and the advanced configuration. And you can save and load. There's another feature. If you notice that each of these windows have a save and load feature. The cool thing about it is that you can save one. Let me click that. You can save it on a local drive or you can save it in a cloud server, MSI's cloud. And uh, of course, if you want to take your settings, maybe join an overclock competition, you can just keep your settings there for your main board. So you don't have to lug around even a thumb drive. How lazy can you be to do that? But uh, that's still a cool feature to have just in case you lose that, that drive or it, you don't need to write down all the settings on paper. And also you have the GPU overclocking here for GPU frequency and GPU voltage. You adjust the slider and essentially will again turn to red and area if you go beyond that. Uh, let me just hit default again here. Uh, it, it doesn't seem to, uh, the ratio you can just, it does, there's no limit, but for the voltage, definitely there will be a red limit there. You see 1.8 for the DRAM voltage. And also have the clock and ratio frequency here for the GPU over, overclocking, if you are correctly, if you are connecting it directly to the motherboard, the mainboard, without any discrete uh, video card. And here's the GPU voltage here, adjustments. It's all set at auto, and you can again maximize all the way to 2100. 2.1 rather and uh, this next option here is something I'm really excited about this is one that I had to ask uh, MSI Walnut well, OPG let's go back here this is a RAM disk and for those who are not familiar RAM disk essentially allows you to use uh, your memory as a fast storage and this is a lot faster than SSDs I can't emphasize that enough that's why I was excited that this option was for free you can actually buy RAM disk software that will allow you to do this at home I believe AMD sells one and uh, but for this one it is included in command center for main boards that support it and all you need to do is of course in, in click that enable it will use some part of your uh, storage on your regular hard drive, but it also uses your memory. And I'm going to fire Crystal Disk here once I enable it, just to demonstrate just how fast a RAM disk is. It is a lot faster than SSD. And uh, let me just show you here. Uh, for option, once you enable it, it gives you a disk letter. It give, gives you a disk, uh, disk name. You can type in anything there. Uh, let me try that. Uh, HDL RAM. Yeah, you can check the disk size this is about you can see the range here from 32 megabytes this is an increment of megabytes all the way to 13760 at least for my option I have 16 gigs of RAM here and didn't want to use the entire uh, memory here so uh, let's try to give it something in between something bigger uh, that it won't run out of space when I run uh, when it want when I run crystal disk so let's see 2400 here and you can set also the formatting option, FAT32, NTFS. Obviously, smaller ones will give you more options for FAT16. And uh, you have all the, also the option to use it as an IE cache. Unfortunately, I don't have Chrome and Firefox installed. So it's you can see that these are grayed out. But the option automatically will set it. Uh, as a, a caching for that so it's if you if you want to speed up your web browsing definitely it's a very cool option you can also use it as a temp uh, file page or uh, rather for page files um, instead of using your SSD if you don't want to use it you can use a RAM disk if you have a big enough memory and uh, you can see that it you can store some of that image when you that's why I mentioned earlier it uses some space in your drive and uh, so essentially when you shut down your computer your RAM will not be able to keep that information so what this does if you store something in that uh, RAM disk is that it'll, it uses some part of your uh, drive here and it creates an image that it can recall later when you you reboot it back up again and uh, you can also have a backup option right now you can keep on backing the RAM disk up onto your uh, local hard drive just in case your computer shuts down and you're working on something also auto backup option here so that's very cool and uh, let me just hit accept here and see if it pops up and see I don't think you need to restart this one it should be uh, automatic it should give us a uh, there you go. it's working you can see my busy icon right there in the uh, lower portion 
take a few minutes it's contacting of course the main board and then the RAM and I'm running a uh, Corsair uh, Vengeance Pro memory uh, these are new memory uh, there you go completes successfully let's see that Microsoft Windows if it's compatible let's see it didn't format it so let's try it again I don't want to format it with uh, other options except for the except for what is available here uh, via the software because I don't want to use Win Windows will not be able to format that uh, properly let's try that try that again make sure nothing pops up uh, it, probably depending on your RAM size probably some configurations are not compatible I tried it earlier and it was working fine uh, Nope, let's see. It allows me to format it with uh, Windows and uh, default. Now it's reading my capacity is one megabyte, so okay, popped up again. Oh, I don't know if that's uh, set now. There you go. Ah, it's still not. Okay, let's try that a third time. I swear it was working earlier, and let's see here. 4,000 megabytes, FAT32, accept. Now, I would have loved it if it was completely hitch free, but uh, of course it's uh, it's a new feature and I'm working through it. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna cut this video right here. So I'm gonna show you uh, what I'm experiencing uh, because some of you of course will, will see that and will might say that uh, it wasn't working on your end but I swear it was working earlier for me and uh, I popped this up again every time this one pops up it won't let me format so what I'm going to do let me just try uh, disable it and then enable it because that one worked earlier instead of keeping keep keep making changes here so I'm gonna hit disable disable successfully and then hit enable I would have preferred it if it was uh, sort of you have to hit apply to do that. Enabled successfully. It show up there. Okay, still not. Volume level is corrupted. Okay. 128 megabytes. It's too small. Fat 16. Let's try. It. Let's try. It. Let's try. Actually, it probably only likes uh, multiples of that. So, uh, let's try 128, 1,200, 32, accept. Actually, my math is wrong. 1,200 is not a multiple of 128. Well, anyway, let's see if it uh, works. There we go. The window thing didn't pop up, so you can tell that it is working now. And uh, I'm just going to do a quick crystal disk here, crystal disk test. Show you just how, oh, actually there's a 32-bit. Let me find the 64-bit one I use for benchmarking. And pick, of course, your DRAM. I have uh, 1.2 megabytes here. It's probably Windows 8 that is preventing from that much uh, usage of memory. Of course, uh, let's try that. Let me just run it. Uh, this program usually takes a while to benchmark, but I'm just gonna leave it here to the side and just uh, I'm I'm uh, it will I'm expecting at least four digits there uh, for the uh, for the speeds. There you go, a thousand. Uh, you can even reach the right will probably exceed that about twelve thousand. So uh, that is definitely a speed that you will never see on an SSD or in local drive. Uh, even the, you have the fastest SSD right now, uh, your local. Uh, rather the fastest desktop SSD you will not reach that level of speed that a RAM disk has that's why I'm really excited that it is included as a feature a free feature on this MSI mainboard and uh, I'm just keep that running and uh, I'm going to show you this last tab here the OC Genie of course uh, this is MSI's uh, one of MSI's most 
well-known feature. It is uh, a, a very smart overclock, uh, over, auto overclock implementation and all you need to do essentially is hit that button, hit apply and it will automatically overclock for you. I'll overclock here, it shows you the diagram there of the steps it, it takes for the CPU, CPU voltage, CPU ratio, base clock memory module, it over adjust the DRM voltage then the memory frequency and then a GPU, built-in GPU for GPU voltage and GT ratio and automatically will does that, it will do that, it will detect that, it will, it will try multiple things for you so you don't have to keep on uh, testing it out trial and error uh, as if overclocking via the MSI command center wasn't easy enough already uh, with this part right here and uh, I forgot to set that default value so uh, there's the OCG in here that has been proven to work uh, for years now, even before when, uh, before when these kind of auto auto overclock features start popping up in main boards. MSI was the was one of the first ones that had a really really smart auto overclock feature that actually worked. And uh, I'm gonna probably show that to you in a different video because uh, this video is already running long, 20 minutes long. And as you can see, the uh, the speeds are still going there for the uh, RAM disk. It's using the RAM as a storage. And uh, let's finish rounding up here for the rest of the overview. You have the information tab at the bottom. It shows you the information for your motherboard. Again, a pop-up window, CPU, and each one. Every time you open one, it will show you that Ch uh, child window. So you can, if you have a large enough monitor, or secondary monitor, you can keep that open and uh, just have that running and shows you the the phones that are still seeing my CPU as 4300 MHz it's I hit default already uh, I probably needed to hit apply let me try that again CPU and it's still reading at 4300 <laughs> MHz so uh, that's probably a, I don't know if I stumbled for a little uh, to a little bug here but uh, let me just verify quickly with CPU Z but uh, as you can see that it is still running completely just to show you that it is definitely a very fast uh, feature to have let me just stop that exit and disable my uh, yeah, stop and let me just fire up a CPU Z here just to verify if my my uh, why my actually I don't have it installed I have AIDA so let me try that I'm sorry. I, I'm, I know this isn't part of the overview, but uh, it piqued my curiosity that uh, there was the the overclock was not reset to default as I was uh, showing it earlier. So let's see here. It is still showing us 4.3 gigahertz. Maybe I have to manually do that. Hit apply. There you go, now it's back. Apparently hitting default doesn't seem to work here. Or was that the apply? Well, anyway, as you can see, it is working fine. Uh, very good overclock here. And I'm going to probably make a separate video showing you the OCG, uh, all the different steps, because this was running long already, this is 22 minutes long already, for a overview of the options. Uh, and also just at the top here you also have the option uh, here uh, info for command center also have the gadget mode well it turns the command center into a smaller just option here that you can use and maybe if you have you don't have multiple monitors you can just have that running 24 7 and just has a, as a gadget um, and causes to keep track of the CPU temperature and your frequency and your GPU frequency as well and that's pretty much it and uh, this is pretty much uh, the overview of the uh, MSI command center using the mpower max mainboard uh, but once again it is compatible with their uh, the rest of their z87 line definitely and uh, you can read those reviews by going to hightechregion.com clicking the link below or also by uh, visiting us at Facebook or Twitter, facebook.com slash hlreviews or twitter.com slash hightechlegion. And once again, this is Ron uh, signing out and uh, enjoyed showing you the features here and for a quick overview and uh, sort of a mini tutorial of the MSI Command Center as part of my Empower Max mainboard review.